Eight men and four women lied. Crooned the car stereo as I drove down the long, windy, pitch black road. I watched the highway ahead of me, being as alert as possible. Far too many times people have died or become grievously injured for not paying attention in the middle of the night on lonely one-lane roads. I was driving in California between Santa Maria and the Interstate 5, going west to east. Highway 166 is a 100-mile stretch through a twisting mountain pass filled with harsh rocky cliffs, a few bridges, and greenery that then turns to dirt and vacant flatness for miles on end, occasionally interrupted by an out-of-the-way home, ranch, or the few tiny collection of houses that constitutes as towns. Then back to another set of windy cliffs before being dumped through a foul-smelling area due to the third largest oil field in the United States. It's a road I know very well, driving back and forth on it for Christmas to visit family. During the day, it is a relaxing drive for the first half, then mind-numbingly boring, and then to hold in your breath for the remainder. During the night, however, it becomes a black road with only the lights of the stars and moon to guide you. But on cloud-covered nights, it's just black void. A dark ride alone with the brights on and continuously being vigilant and alert. And found me guilty for loving you. I had just made it past the windy sheer cliffs and breathed a sigh of relief. Now with less worry about falling off the wrong side and dying, I relaxed and settled into the long drawn out drive on the mostly straight shot until Maricopa, where I figured I could take a rest and change my wet clothes. Diamond the Galas continued on with her song through my stereo to keep me awake. I tried to sing along, but her screams sometimes elude my vocal range. With another good screech and the sound of a rumble as I made a quick swerve to avoid some poor, unfortunate dead animal on the road, I decided I would switch to something else I could sing along to so I could better pay attention. Flipping through my various playlists, I kept looking between my display and the road ahead, and luckily, I was looking up at the time when I saw a great big flash of white reflect in my headlights. I turned off the music and slowed my car in quiet, almost automatic response. There on the side of the road was an older Latino man, perhaps in his sixties. He was pudgy and short, bundled in a large jacket, plaid shirt, jeans, and cowboy boots. A large white cowboy hat. The thing that reflected my headlights was on top of his head. Beneath it, I could see his dark eyes squinting behind his wrinkled face, and his toothless mouth smiled, lifting his large cheeks up. In his hand, he held a small orange tabby cat, and a crane in the other that he leaned on. I lowered the window as I pulled up to him tentatively. I called out to him, Hey, what are you... I didn't get to finish my question. The old man lifted his cane at me and started to laugh. It was a ugly, dry laugh. His cane pointed and shook at me like an extension of his finger. The cat hissed at me, clawing at the air in my direction. Caught off guard, I tried to stammer a question. Why are you laughing? Without answer, he turned away from me and started to walk away back the way I came. Still, I tried to call back to him, but he didn't give me any indication he heard or cared. Still laughing, his cackling droned out the sound of my car. Then, after just a few steps, I couldn't see him. I would have used the passenger side window, but it was broken. I checked my rear view mirror and saw him just at the edge of my trunk. 
There in the red light, the old man gave a sudden laughing howl, and with his cane, he started to bash the back of my car. Laughing, crescendoing, his attack on my car got more aggressive, making loud scrapes, and even making it bounce up and down with loud, deep thuds inside. I made up my mind to just drive away, to hell with him and his cat. I drove as fast as I dared, which was the speed limit, away from him. In time, I would reach one of the towns, and I could at least let them know there's an old man walking on the side of the road. Maybe find an old-fashioned payphone, swing by, drop a call, and just get the hell out of there without having to talk to anyone face to face. I considered using my cell phone, but this place was a well-known black hole of cell reception for many, many carriers. I tried to shake off the unease and growing pit in my stomach as I reached over to turn back on my stereo. But I didn't get the chance to turn on the music. My lights caught in front of the road another dead animal. I had to push on my brakes to avoid hitting it at full speed. As I did so, I realized it had orange fur. I debated getting out of my car and checking it. As I was about to undo my seatbelt, I looked in my rearview mirror. There, bathed in the red light of my car's brake lights, was the old man standing there just enough to be in full view. He was pointing again with that cane, and again he started to laugh. That harsh, dry, unnerving laugh. I stared in that silent, uncomfortable awe. Then he started to hobble towards me. I decided against checking on the cat and just drove around it as quickly as possible. I tried to rationalize how quickly the old man had caught up and tried to convince myself that the animal in front of my car was just another poor creature. But I couldn't shake it. I tried driving in silence and for a while it seemed I would be just fine. Again I decided to break up the quiet and dispel the terrifying event with music. As I reached again for the play button, I was halted. I heard a loud thud come from the front of my car and an unmistakable cry of pain. The sound of a cat being hurt. I slammed on the brakes, causing another thud, and just for the sake of paranoia, I checked my rearview mirror again. No old man stood in the red light. I heaved a sigh and went to grab my door handle out. As I did so, my eye caught the side view mirror, and it looked to the back of my car. There he was, standing there, facing away in silence, no laughing. I stared, transfixed. I knew I should have gotten out to confront him, or just gotten away but I felt like I couldn't move until he did. But ever so slowly, I lifted my hand from the handle and reached over to the steering wheel, an action that was difficult. My arms were quite sore from lifting. Almost as if in response, the old man started to walk backwards towards the car, his cane making a crunch with each step on the road. Uncaring of what it was I had hit, though my mind was aflame with images of a dead orange tabby, I pressed the gas and was off again. My heart was in my throat, as again I did my best to drive right at the speed limit, being well aware of everything in front of me and checking the rearview mirror for him. He didn't appear. I drove past the small town midway through, thinking that no cop or emergency services were going to be able to help me let alone believe me. So I just drove in terrified silence. As I got further, I started to feel again a bit at ease, but still paranoid enough not to focus on anything else. The road started to incline, and I knew I was getting close to the next town. And even better still, I could see a semi-truck ahead of me. 
Sure, it was a one-lane windy road which meant we would be going at minimal speeds, but I felt somehow at ease that there was another person on the road with me. As I got closer to the truck, I eased up on the gas and followed behind them. We drove like a silent duo for some time. Then the truck started to slow down, and then just made a stop midway up the hill. Stuck behind his red lights, I sat for a moment in silence, waiting patiently for him to start up again or come out. But as I waited, an unease crept over me as I truly did not want to, but still looked into the rearview mirror. My veins felt as if they had all frozen solid in the blood-red light of my brakes. He was there again, standing with his cat in hand and leaning on his cane, his cowboy hat covering his head as he seemed to be staring down. But I could see his old, wrinkled, laughing mouth. He took a step forward. I looked back to the semi in front of me, its red lights daring me to try and cross it. I looked back to my rearview mirror. The old man had gotten closer. He was lifting his hat. I honked repeatedly at the semi in front of me. Looking back again, the old man had removed his hat as he had gotten even closer. He was bald and seemed to have had a bad scrape across his head, like a dark burn mark. Tar black. I had, I admit, expected far worse in my mind. But as he continued to laugh, the cat started to slowly slide out of his hand. Stretching out like liquid, it started to thin in the middle, impossibly long. It soon broke its flesh open at the thinnest part, ripping apart the front half, it sloughed forward, hanging on by the viscera and bone. It swung back and forth, dripping blood on the ground. The old man stopped laughing. His mouth pulled into a pained, anguished, silent scream as he started to cock his head to the side. Further and further he turned it, his eyes fixed on me. It kept turning and turning until finally the loud crack sounded and his head stiffly continued, moving like the hands of a clock downward. His head was upside down when he started to move his body. He leaned forward. The cat slid out of his hand into a wet mess on the floor. His body turned at the waist, turning and turning like his head had done, twisting and cracking unnaturally. Turning his torso towards the sky, and in irony, turning his head right side up. His arm, holding his cane, pointed forward, thrusted outward, and twisting along with the body, turning the cane like a key. And his face started to push into itself, as if it were melting upwards. It was then I saw it. His twisted, mangled body pointing his cane towards me, his pained and anguished scream turned around and molded by whatever invisible force. He looked like he was pointing and laughing at me. I screamed, uncaring of what was in the oncoming traffic. I slammed on the gas and pulled to the side with a loud thud. I zoomed past the stopped semi-truck. As I did so, I tried to see if anyone was standing on the side. But there was the old man, sitting in the driver's seat of the truck, his arm jutting out, pointing his cane and laughing at me, his cat hanging off the side of the door. I drove fast and hard, not looking back as I climbed the hill. I needed to get to the next town, I needed to get past this place and inside light around people, I didn't care what my clothes looked like. I kept looking in my rearview mirror and didn't see him, but that was not going to slow me down this time. 
Somehow, as I crested the hill, I saw that just ahead there was a cop car coming up towards me. I knew I had to slow down or risk getting pulled over. The cop wouldn't believe me. Wouldn't want to believe me. And worse. No, I had to slow down, no matter how scared I was. Plus, I'd be stopped somewhere on the road with the old man in my rear view. I slowed to the speed limit and tried so hard not to lose my grip on reality. I watched as the cop car drove past me while my fingers held with white knuckle grips. I turned my attention back to the road that was now downhill and saw clear sailing. I even saw the light of the town ahead. Down I drove, doing my best to slow down by just coasting. But I started to go too fast. I had to slow down. I had to press the brakes. With fear of seeing him behind me, I timidly pressed the pedal. I checked backwards. He wasn't behind my car. He was in my back seat. His misshapen face laughing at me. I screamed. I panicked and slammed on the brakes and swerved around. When I did, the glove box came open and the bisected body of the cat tumbled out, spraying its insides and blood everywhere. The top half rolled into the passenger seat and hissed and clawed at me. I turned around. The old man was gone. I checked the passenger seat. The cat was gone and my glove box was closed. I looked in my rearview mirror and saw something else that terrified me. The police car had pulled up behind me and the cop was walking towards my car. I opened the window as he came to the door. I looked to the officer and told him. Before I turned off my car, the stereo came to life for a brief moment. The Amanda Galas shouted, Guilty, guilty.